I'm um, type 1 diabetes and I've had it since I was 2. I'm now 29. As a teenager is when it got really, really difficult. I started experimenting with insulin. Obviously I could feel that I was having high blood sugars, but I noticed that I was losing weight dramatically, um, which as a teenage girl felt quite good at the time. It's relatively common for us to see people disengaging from their diabetes mm. treatment. It's often people in their late teens at that age it's one of the most difficult times of life you've got a lot of peer pressure to conform to certain ideals in society and things like that so it's very easy to want to ignore diabetes seeing a psychologist can be really helpful if you're feeling stuck and frustrated with your diabetes it doesn't mean you've got a mental health problem if you're seeing a psychologist chronic health conditions um, are very difficult to manage um, and cope with um, and many people uh, benefit from seeing a psychologist. Before I was diagnosed for, for many years there was, there was indications that I was diabetic but I took absolutely no notice. Still to this day haven't really accepted it um, but very hard to digest. I carried on for years and years paying no attention to uh, what I was told would happen. People with type 1 diabetes don't want type 1 diabetes so they often then close their eyes to it but certainly as our role it would be to try and bring the person into a place where they can deal with their diabetes so therefore lessen the risk of the complications of diabetes. My dad's actually type 1 diabetic as well. We'd have regular meetings, he'd help me with my blood sugars and what dosages to give. Um, my mum would always check as well and just check that I'm doing my blood sugars um, and, and would just say, yeah, I'm doing them, like, they've been great in range. Um, so they were supportive as what they could be, but I was still, still hiding it and lying to them about it. I think it was a psychological condition, but I wasn't aware of that at the time. I genuinely felt like I would just get away with it. That's how I felt. A lot of patients feel uh, that they're not coping well with their diabetes, feeling that they're failing, um, and that can mean that they look after themselves, engage with their diabetes uh, much less well. Difficulties managing diabetes can lead to lots of complications. Uh, we think particularly when patients have had poor control for a long time, that can affect their eyes, uh, it can also affect their kidneys. Uh, and affect their feet as well. If people had type 2 diabetes particularly, but also type 1 diabetes, increased risk of having heart disease, stroke disease uh, and leg ulcers as well. I stopped working just over a year ago. Um, that wasn't through choice. I started uh, obviously going downhill at work maybe a year before I finished. Um, spent a lot of time hiding away um, in the office. I became a bit of an office manager, um, not doing anything. Um, sleeping, believe it or not. Um, how could I get away with that? Um, I'd just lock the door and I'd make sure no one, no one ever bothered me. I didn't know what to do. You know, I had to provide for my family, I had to pay the bills. Um, it, survival management, that's, that's basically what I did, hid away. The sort of impact that complications may have is um, that people may need to attend more hospital appointments, for instance, if they need to go to the eye clinic. Uh, they might need to have treatment to their eyes and they might suffer some degree of visual loss. They may get problems with the nerves affecting their, their gut as well, which can cause vomiting and diarrhoea and, and things like that that can be quite intrusive to everyday life. Between 2011 and 2012, I started to experience my first complications. Um, so I'd have some tummy issues where I was being sick quite a lot and I'd get the few odd pains in my legs and I was diagnosed with gastroparesis and um, nerve damage in my legs. Still didn't really take much notice, but it was 2016 um, and I woke up with a blurred eye. My right eye was blurred and I went to uh, the eye hospital and they told me that I'd had a retinopathy bleed and they sent me for emergency surgery the next day. And that's when my life completely changed. For seven months, was a massive battle where I had seven eye operations in seven months and as a result of that I'm now blind in my left eye. So that was that was a really tough, tough year. And then it went on to 2017 with eye injections as well. 
So that was a really, really, really tough time. I'm now currently sitting at 30 eye injections. That's 30 each eye. I have uh, lots of nerve damage uh, throughout both legs. I now have no working kidneys, uh, no working pancreas, and have dialysis at the moment four times a week due to um, not being able to clear any fluids. Um, and a very tired, tired life. Not the best uh, situation to be in. I was physically blind um, for up to six weeks at a time. Six weeks was the maximum time that I was blind in, in both eyes. Um, I had to have training on using a white cane to be able to get around. My anxiety was, was huge because I couldn't go out the house because there'd been a time where I'd been out with my friends and could see and within minutes I was blind so I just never knew when it was going to happen, when I was going to have an eye bleed. So I, I couldn't go out with my friends as much as I wanted, I couldn't go out with my, my boyfriend um, or see family as much as I wanted um, or even keep in touch with them, to texting and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it really took, took a battering on my psychological health at the time. Every single person diagnosed with type 1 diabetes feels overwhelmed at some point during their diabetes life. We sit and we will listen to people and we will explain that we're not there to judge and we will explain that we're actually there to help them and to support them and that actually, you know, nobody's perfect in life and we all make mistakes um, and yeah, just to move them through that period of um, feeling the way they do. I now have a heart uh, or identified heart disease. So that's now put me in a position where they don't think I'm strong enough to have a pancreas and kidney transplant. So um, it looks like just a kidney transplant. To have a kidney, uh, to not have to go to dialysis at the moment four times a week, four hour sessions, uh, it would be a transformation. The complications have a huge impact on people's lives. Heart failure is increasingly recognised as a complication of diabetes and an increasingly common complication and that makes people breathless, it makes them tired, it makes them unable to do the job that they want to do or maybe to enjoy their family life that they want to enjoy. So there are lots of ways in which diabetes affects people's ability to, to lead what we might consider to be a normal life or a healthy life. It's just not the eye issues that I'm dealing with now. So I now have kidney disease, stage four, and I'm now on a waiting list for a kidney and pancreas transplant. Um, they realised my kidneys were at 30% function and um, they are now at 18%. The average waiting time, they said, is, is uh, 12 to 18 months, but I've, I've already received one call already, so I just never know if I'm, if I'm coming or going. But um, I know it's a massive, massive positive, but it's, it's a very scary journey at the moment that I'm on. I don't know if it's if it's because of the age I was. I was I, I've at that age I felt bulletproof. I really did, you know, heart attacks, getting old, strokes, things like that. Doesn't happen to me. Um, ill health wouldn't happen to me. You know, um, I was thinking ten years down the line. God, I'm so cool. It doesn't matter if I'm alive or not. You know, 15, 20 years down the line. I am now there, 15, 20 years down the line. I am still alive and I'm paying for it now. Um, I, would, I would do things different, definitely do things different. If you're struggling with your type 1 diabetes control then um, we would want you to um, call us, make an appointment, email us and indeed offer an open door policy to people that are struggling. Please come in, please make an appointment and we will sit and have a cup of coffee and a cup of tea and a chat. You're not indestructible, it will happen. It will. Inevitably, it will. No, no one's going to get away with it. If you don't crack on and look after yourself, one complication will appear, two, three, four, they will keep coming. It, it will happen. I just feel like you should take the support that you, you get. Try not to fight it and try not to hide from it. Speak to people. If you feel that you are mentally struggling with it, speak to people because that's the only thing that can get you through sometimes is opening up, being honest, and 
You won't be in trouble, you'll be helped. What we want to do is be the person who helps you get where you want to be. And usually we do that by trying to make small changes and small targets and helping you follow those through. Um, and hopefully being the person who listens rather than the person who just tells you what to do. You're not bulletproof. You do need to take it serious um, because I, I'm an example of how not to do it. And trust me, I'll, I'll swap you for your position anytime. I don't want to be in this position. And it's a situation that I brought upon myself purely down to people wanting and willing to help me, but I took no notice because it doesn't happen to me. Diabetes is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And there will be some times when you feel really passionate and engaged and fully on board. There'll be other times when you'll feel washed out and exhausted. And in a sense, I want to say that's okay. You shouldn't feel ashamed about that. We're not going to blame you about that. We're not going to judge you for that. This is about just coming along, um, sharing some of those burdens. And if we can help you, if we can unload some of those burdens, if we can give you a bit of advice that makes the diabetes just that bit more manageable, we would love to do that. I have two young children, 10 and 12, uh, a good wife, uh, my future, it's not something that I really talk about much, a future. Do I, do I have a future? Um, I, guess, I guess I do. Uh, a lot of it hinges on having a transplant. For people who are struggling with their diabetes management, it's really important to reach out, uh, whether that's through your GP, through your nurse or, or a diabetes doctor, and let them know, and they should be able to refer you or put you in contact with sources of help. Hopefully, after transplant, I have been told that if everything runs smoothly and there's no complications within a year, then I should be able to try for a family. So um, that's, my, that's my main goal and that's what's keeping me going at the moment. So hopefully in the future, um, after the double transplant, I'll be back to a real healthy self and hopefully be able to start a family. Thank you.